The historical fiction book Paco's Story by Larry Heyman is a book about a veteran who fought in the Vietnam War. The novel is shaped around Paco's surveillance life and his experiences ever since he, the only one out of his crew, survived the Viet, Viet Cong attack on Firebase Harriet all the way until the end, in which he takes a bus to run away. The main characters of the story are Paco's villain, the main character and veteran of the Vietnam War, who suffers every day since from all the injuries and scars left on his body and, be and became unable to live without painkillers. He's also a very pessimistic man who believes his life can't get any better. However, throughout the story, we see a shift in his attitude into becoming a veteran with a lot of hope for his future. Ernest Monroe, an ex-Marine veteran, owner of the Texas Lunch, who hired Paco as a dishwasher, and he's a nice old man who loves to tell his war stories. The plot of the story is really simple, since the main parts are stories told by Paco, Ernest, and other people. The book consists of Paco first getting bombed in Vietnam, being found by, being found by a doctor, getting back to the US, finding a job and a place to stay after looking for a long time, and deciding to move on forward with his life. The story is organized into seven chapters each, of which talk about a certain point in Paco's life. And my favorite one was chapter three, the thanks to a grateful nation, because it mainly showed how ungrateful, selfish, and ignorant people are because of how bad Paco was treated and how little care the government gives to veterans after serving for their country. History mainly because it talks about the Vietnam War, which lasted from 1955 to 1975 due to the U.S. believing that communism in Vietnam could expand all throughout Southeast Asia, thus leading to the U.S.'s intervention. However, as I was reading the book, I was able to get a deeper understanding of how the story was primarily trying to show the effects of war on veterans and how horrible their life can get afterwards serving for what, what is supposed to be a good cause. I also found this novel as a way for the author to convey the ignorance of the government and people that they have towards our veterans, or better yet, the people that risk their lives or the country we live in. And this connects to history because there has been a huge call from people around the US to the government asking for more care towards our veterans ever since it became a problem. An example of this would be, the re would be recently the news publisher The Hill published an article on why the Senate must pass the Mission Act to give veterans the care they deserve. Now, the most interesting thing about the book, in my opinion, is the beginning in chapter 2, God's Marvelous Plan, because it describes in detail how he, out of his crew of 20 plus men, was the only one to survive the Viet Cong attack and being borderline dead after two days until he was luckily found by a doctor and rescued. The author of Paco's story, Larry Hyman, was born and raised in Chicago. In 1967, he was drafted into the military and fought in the Vietnam War, making him unable to finish college. This makes him very credible to write Paco's story, a Vietnam War veteran story, because he lived through all the hardships. In addition to this, after the war, he went to Columbia University and studied writing, making him very credible in writing a story. According to BrothersJoe.com, because of the unusual narrative structure, the lack of life outside of Paco's job, and the unoriginal war scenes, it disconnects readers from Paco and his feelings, and the readers cannot connect to the character at all. Personally, I would recommend Paco's story because it is a brilliant story that is told vividly and clearly. However, there are a lot of cuss words, making it not a book for everyone.